Welcome to Sound Advice with Phyllis Nichols. This podcast is for women and the men who love them who are determined to make a difference in the world. You'll hear from other women who followed their own path to success, who are willing to share what they've learned along the way. Be ready to laugh, learn, and be inspired. Who knows, your story could be next. Your host, Phyllis Nichols, will make sure you see the possibilities in your own life, and even better, give you proven strategies to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Welcome to the Sound Advice Podcast. This is Phyllis Nichols, and today I have a guest with me, uh, my good friend, Teresa Cleveland. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Phyllis. Great to be here. How's it going? Well, yeah, it's nice to have you here. Now, just for the people that don't know you, Teresa, let me tell you, she is the owner and founder of the Entrepreneur's Toolbox, which is a uh, wonderful website and also just a group of really great um, tools and, and things like that. She is a business development strategist, and she works with small business owners um, who are in startup mode or sometimes even start over mode to help them meet their goals. One of the nice things about Teresa is that she's not a cookie cutter type of a Approach. She works individually with everybody and really wants to help people make an impact. And I know that you have. Teresa probably is too modest to tell you this, but she's worked with hundreds of people. She's built hundreds of websites and helped people with their business strategies and their business goals for a number of years. So she comes with lots of great experience and lots of great insights as well. Well, so gosh. welcome. Thanks. That I like that. <laughs> uh, so one one of the questions I like to start off with um, in our conversation because uh, you know we 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 always want to give out some strategies to help people in business or in life um, because we're not all just none of us are just one thing. So what is a good piece of advice or piece of sound advice that has uh, served you well? You know, it's really funny because I was thinking about this and. I I thought, because I've heard some of your other podcasts, and I just thought, you know what? The thing that probably serves me the best is the thing that I didn't pay attention to in the beginning. And if I could rewind the hands of time, I would. And and it's about really getting to know your ideal client, to know your audience, to know exactly who they are. Not to the degree that you need to know what type of toilet paper they use and, and all of that. <laughs> But, um, you know, I just thought, oh, I, I, I want to get out there. I want to, you know, learn and see what everybody else is doing. And I can help a lot of people. And I think, I won't say it was a waste of time, but I think that I, I really let that spin out longer than it should have. But since I've nailed that now, and so that's when we talk about that start up or start over, you know, we all kind of go through those stages and so for me, it was the, like saying, okay, now, now I understand. And so now that I've actually applied it and done it, it's made all the difference in the world. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. Sometimes um, there's key pieces of clarity and we can resist some of that sometimes in the beginning, right? Like we want to sort of keep all these options open to us and um, it feels really good sometimes to do that. And then, but it is also really hard, right? Because we can't be all things to all people and things like that. So, you know, that it's, it's, it's definitely sort of a push and a pull sometimes with that kind of thing. Absolutely. And th there are, it's, it's interesting as again, I've been through it myself and a lot of the, uh, a lot of my consulting clients are, have gone through that where, you know, they started out and either they try to do everything by the book, by whatever cookie cutter was being sold at the time, or right. they just threw it all to the wind and they were going to invent it themselves. And, you know, because their business <laughs> right. was different or wonderful and all that. And, and then, you know, you come around and you're like, okay, now I've got a good feel for what what works and what doesn't work and and I need to figure out what works for me. That is so important too is is being willing to sort of identify that, right? To be saying, okay, I need to really because it takes a little bit of Oh, honesty and introspection too. Like I would love, you know, we'd all love to sort of aspire to be maybe some of these, you know, some right, we have mentors or or just people in business that we would aspire to be like. But we we don't necessarily um, have the traits they have, or we wouldn't want to necessarily do our business in the same way, right? So we, we have to sort of be real honest about who I am, how I want to do things, that sort of thing. I know one of the questions that you ask your clients is kind of who do you want to be or what do you want to be known for? The first time that you talked to me about that, you know, it's kind of eye-opening because 
that you do have to get specific, right? You don't want to just say, oh, I want to be known for being that business girl or that, that whatever that website girl, girl right? The yeah. website woman, right? So, you know, when you, when you ask that question, it's pretty insightful. And I, I would guess that um, it's not always easy for people to answer. It's not always easy to answer. And not only is it not easy, it's not comfortable. Because there are all kinds of things that go on in our minds. What if I choose the wrong thing? What if I what if I decide I want to do this? And being a, a small business owner, as you and I'm sure a lot of your li- of your listeners have realized, is uh, there's that fear. There's 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 a fear of this. There's a fear of that. And it's so empowering to come out on the other side of that. And what I find is authenticity. And I know people probably just roll their eyes and groan because. Authenticity has gotten a bad rap because it's so overused. But you know what? There is – it's your authenticity. It's about being who you are and how you want to show up in the world. And sometimes there is a lot of fear and anxiety around that because it's like, well, what if it's not good enough? What if I'm not smart enough? What if I'm not perky enough? You know, whatever that enough is. And that holds holds a lot of people back, and that's just – scary thing to come face to face with and what I love is I have found working with clients all over the world there's this common thread that we all share that we just want to leave this place better than we found it whether that's being a parenting coach whether that's being a puppy trainer you know whatever each of us our skills and talents are and so when we're able to step into that and be that puppy trainer who maybe only trains cocker spaniels whereas somebody else does an, another breed whatever your magic is whatever your genius is go out your brilliance let that shine and when you step into that and trust that oh my gosh oh my gosh that that is the best feeling in the world to me when i when i do it for myself and when i see other people do it and you just hear like it's it's like singing it's great <laughs> yeah, it it really is. And, you know, when when that kind of happens and you see that happen, whether it's for yourself or you see that happen with a client, um, you know, I've been fortunate to, to, to be on both sides of that. Not only, I mean, it's obviously it's, it's kind of that huge light bulb that goes off, right? But at the same time, too, like so many other things then become really much more simple and clear, right? Like how do I want to, whether it's you're talking about your business model or what kind of website should you have or um, how do I want to communicate with my uh, customers, you know, all these different things, right, where you where we could literally go thousands of different directions, then all of a sudden, you know, it just becomes really clear when it's like, oh, this is this is my place. This is how I want to show up, and this is this is what's right for me. And it is a really cool feeling. Singing, that's kind of it is sort of one of those like ah oh, moments. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, which and, is really neat. And we and it helps clarify everything else. It's so funny because you know I'm going through revamping my entire website and and my business model as we roll into 2016 and it is just the logos okay we're just working on the name and the fonts oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> this is, i have gone through at least 85 different fonts and and it is and it just doesn't make sense and it makes my head hurt and then when i when i step away from that and i and i think about my ideal client and when i think about who they are and what they're struggling with and the other stuff just it it just works itself out and and everything i think comes into contact it comes into context because like even with the fonts i'm looking at them and i'm like oh that one's too harsh and you know i work primarily with with females i i have some great clients that are guys and but the primarily i work with females so i don't want anything harsh or this or that so so it's really helping me to streamline a lot of my processes from something as would seemingly be as simple as figuring out a font, you know, to developing <laughs> programs, to where I want to speak, to to where I want to go hang out and spend time where I can help people. When you have that, it's, it's kind of like your the lighthouse or, you know, barometer. Yeah. It just it helps you stay yeah. on track. 
Right. That's a great, that's sort of a great analogy, right? Because you sort of just can kind of go back to what will like that home base or something and be like, you know what? I can, I, I know the right answer. I can find the right answer because I have this sort of home base, this base of, you know, what I know is right for me and my intention for my clients and so forth, which is cool. So now if somebody's listening today and they're listening to this conversation and they're like, this all sounds great, but you know, I'm in, that space where I don't know or I'm really struggling with this. What couple of tips would you give them to maybe be able to take that step forward to get, you know, to gain some of that clarity? Is there a couple of things that come to mind that might be able to get them on the right path? Well, first of all, I want to, I just want to acknowledge anyone who is going out and, and developing a business. It's it's phenomenal. Kudos to you for getting out there, for stepping up, because a lot of people think about it, and there are fewer who actually do it. So kudos to you, first of all, for out, being out there doing it. And I this sounds so maybe Yoda-ish or, you know. We, <laughs> well, we Yoda's heard, great. Yeah, but every you have everything you need inside of you. The answers are all there you have to be able to trust yourself so so there's a couple of different things that depending on the person because again you know I'm not about cookie cutters so just a couple of things that have worked for for different clients of mine get a journal get a journal get a notebook get a a note app on your phone you know how whatever works best for you and as things occur to you write them down don't judge them just just write them down record them so that you can go back in your moments when you're when you're creating for your business and for your community that you can look at that and it's going to feel right or it's not it's going to line up again it will help you when once you uh, nail these things down. So that's one. Another thing is a flip chart. If you have a flip chart or a poster board, whatever. So on that, you're going to create your the people that you want to work with and the people that are attracted to you. So as you're going to, again, I'm not talking about what kind of toilet paper they use or, or any right. of that. What I'm saying is because I, I think in this day and age, especially with there's so much of the online business and networking and you talk to people all over the place. So what you want to record to me more so than quote unquote demographics is start recording what the, what you hear them struggling with. Write down what they're, what they're rejoicing about whenever they, they have a win. Like what is that? Write that stuff down so that you begin to get to know them as people, as, as real not just an avatar, but you get to know them as a real person just as you're a real person. And then something else that works is if you can just walk away, put your desk under or put your chair under the desk, put your feet on the street, walk around the block, go out to a networking event, go meet some people or be alone with yourself, whichever works for you, just to clear your mind. And if you're out walking with yourself, that I know that helps me a lot. If I can just go out and walk, I'm not listening to anything. I'm just walking. And you get into your own rhythm, and, mm-hmm. and you learn to just reach inside yourself in those moments. And then you get to take that back to the office with you, and you're, back, and you're in charge again, and you know that you have the answers. Thank you for that. That's actually fantastic advice. And, you know, even when you said that, um, I've been through some of this, you know, you and I have talked about some of this before, um, and it's been helpful to me. But even today, just a few minutes ago, when you said, you know, you have everything you need inside you, you know what you need, you know, I found myself just sort of taking a breath and, and having this sort of just a feeling of relief, right? It's which is really nice, right? To to fe- be able to feel kind of comfortable in your own skin that you don't have to be a different kind of person, you don't have to be somebody that you're not. You don't have to, you know, you really do sort of have what you need and trust it a little bit. You know, I I, I think that's for me, you know, just a more than anything a bit of relief. You know, I, I it's because I don't have to try and be something that I'm not, which I think is well, it's impossible, but it's also really hard. It's it's hard to to mentally and psychologically get in that place every day and things like that. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, and you know, I've got that blog post that's hanging out there that I'm still doing the video on about I tried to be perky once. <laughs> <laughs> and and if that's not you, you're right, it is tough and it is it is it exhausts you and it drains you and whereas if you're just being you, you get to go out and you get to create and and you're going to attract because your energy is going to be fresh and upbeat. 
Because you're not trying. Right. You're just kind of being yourself, which is obviously, you know, what you want to be. Um, you know, the other nice thing, and, and when you said that kind of reminded me, it just, you know, a lot of times we're we're looking a little bit sometimes maybe for permission, right? We We want someone to validate that the way we feel or our approach in business is right. And I know with your clients and with the entrepreneur toolbox um, a lot of a lot of what you're doing um, kind of helps with that so somebody comes in and says I want to be the you know the the dog trainer you know to the stars or what have you and this is how I want to work my business and it's really different and unique but I feel really strongly about it there's a place to say yeah you know we can do that and without having to sort of reinvent every little thing under the sun I don't know if that makes any sense but it's kind of cool when people step into that I don't know what's the word like kind of owning it you know like this is this is me and this is I'm owning this little part of of, of this part of my world this part of my business does it make sense? Yes, and it, it makes total sense. And you don't have to be anybody but you. And when you do own it, when you do step into that, there's so much freedom that comes with that because you don't have to worry about, oh, well, what are they, the infamous they, going to say? What are they going right. to think? I read something earlier today or yesterday that says something like it's better to create something that others criticize than to create nothing at all. So, yeah. huh. you know, there's always going to be critics out there. There's always going to be somebody who thinks they can do it better, and maybe they can, but that's going to be the way that they do it. So when you pay attention to and stay in your zone, it just, right. you know, sometimes when I talk about it, it seems so simple, and it really is a simple thing, but it's sometimes very difficult because we've either been out in corporate America or, we, you know, our environment and growing up. I know um, I grew up in a time where if you didn't have letters after your name, you know, if you didn't go to college and have letters after your name, you were less than. I carried that around for years just you know my linkedin profile now cracks me up because it says that i went to the school of hard knocks <laughs> and advent wild <laughs> adventures or something like that but you right. know i've been for the longest time that i that's what i owned was what i felt was the shame or what you know my environment put on me and i accepted that but that wasn't me and so what i know right. when i like look at my LinkedIn thing, I'm just like, I laugh. And I'm like, you know what? Are there people who are going to look at that and say, oh, my God, what a Fruit Loop? Sure, there are. There's going to be more than one. <laughs> but you know what? If there's one or two that just say, oh, my gosh, that I get right. it. You That's going to totally. Do it, I can do it. Anybody can do this. You know, right. it's but just be you, as simple as it sounds and often mm -hmm. more difficult because we have all that stuff we have to wade through to actually be able to embrace who we are. Right. No, that's, and I love that. No, I love that explanation. And you're right. You know, the other nice thing about that, when some people see that on LinkedIn, right, they're going to be attracted to you because they're going to go, that's my kind of person, right? She's, she knows who she is and she's comfortable in her own skin. And, you know, that's really attractive to them. And that's going to be, you know, for the right people, that's going to be super attractive, which is, you know, the whole point, which is really great. I have a lot more fun now. Than I yeah. used to. I when you know when I used to worry about is this the proper way? Is this the is is this you know? And, and a lot of that again comes from corporate America and and like it or not, and it comes from school and you know I'm 55 right. years right. old. So back in the day, you had to do things a certain way to be accepted to be approved. And I today I think is the best time for anybody to be an entrepreneur because if you think it, you can create it. And right. I don't want to make it sound too simplistic because there's definitely you got to roll up your sleeves, you got to show up, you got to continue to show up on the good days, on the bad days, and on the in between days. But as long as you keep showing up, I believe that your success, my success, is inevitable. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end on that note. Um, you can find Teresa at the Entrepreneur's Toolbox, and she also has a Facebook page by the same name. There will be on the website some links and some additional information and some show notes as well. But Teresa, I want to thank you for being with us. Um, you've given us some really great sound advice um, about a lot of things actually. So, thank you for that for being so generous, and um, hopefully we'll be able to have you back on again. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Phyllis. It's always, always great taking that out with you. Till next time, have fun, be you, and share your sound advice with the world. For more info and show notes, or to connect with Phyllis, go to soundadvicesales.com 
or on Facebook at Sound Advice Sales. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.